Bubble sort in pure CSS. Okay, okay. Experiment on the web. Uh, ten part series. All right, so we're in we're in we're in part nine. All right, a pure CSS neural network. That somehow sounds crazier. So it turns out the next article is actually the craziest article that has ever been proposed ever, and it's apparently easier. Hi, future Flip. Hey, Flip, you're gonna be editing this. All right. Well, hey, that's weird. This guy's kind of uh, he loves CSS. Okay. Imagine you're in an interview and you get asked, can you implement bubble sort? And you answer the interview, sure. Do you want that in JavaScript or CSS? What a flex. What a flex would that be? I, yes, but which direction? Is it row or column? Now, I like what you're thinking. No interview, uh, no interview will be impressed by you creating an animation that simulates bubble sword. Actually, I would be. And you would be right. No, that's not true. But what uh, if we would create a functioning bubble sword algorithm in pure CSS and add visualizations to it? Well, you have come to the right place. Instructions. There are five values at the top of the root element. <laughs> this is already, this is already disgusting. Okay. This is already not okay. We are, we are in not a good place right now. Uh, these are our unsorted array. So the above represents this. This is not okay. We're, we're letting them cook, and we're burning down the house. And you can change those values anywhere between 0 and 20. Okay, okay. All right, 0 and 20, classic. And then press run in the code pen UI, and it will actually sort them for you. Warning, on mobile, the last few animations might not play and just go blank on your PC, and your fan may spin up. It's pretty good. That's pretty good. This is a limitation of using so many calculations that rely on previous calculations. I'm not sure if it runs out of memory or what, but I defo pushed the limits of CSS here. Anyways, the warning, uh, the warning's out of the way. Give it a go. You may need to press rerun in the bottom animation to, if it only plays once. Okay. Oh, that's bubbling. Oh, we've been bubbling. Oh, we're bubbling. Oh, that's good. Bubble sorted. That was good. That was bubble sort for sure. Beautiful beautiful uh look this is silly i'm not going to do a tutorial but there are a couple of things that are interesting uh getting a boolean for v1 v2 is greater one than two step one i don't even know what this means like i look at this like i can understand all the individual things we're creating a variable that has min and max we expect a one for minimum we have a var, which I'm not sure what this even means. Is this the var value? We're getting the var value and doing a subtraction, and we're getting a max at the zero mark, oh, with zero being the max. Okay. Okay, it looks complicated, but it isn't. We are performing the following operation. Subtracting the value uh, of position two from the values of position one in our array. Let's call this diff one and two for ease. Uh, find the maximum of diff one and uh, two and zero. And we do this uh, as a way of saying if one is bigger than two, we want a positive value. If two is bigger than one, we want it to return zero. Let's call the result of this one greater or zero. Well, I even mean, if they're the same value. You know what I mean? Do you just like, you're rotating them probably on the same value, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Then we take one greater or zero. Make sure it is not greater than uh, one by using min. So if w one greater, let's see, or zero was six, we could reduce that to one. But if it was zero, then it would return zero. Ah, okay, so we're really getting a Boolean here. Oh, this is a Boolean. Oh, this little mini max thing is truly a Boolean. Either we get a zero if it's less than or a one if it's greater than. Okay. Okay, okay. Here we go. Oh, no, we got it now. We don't need to look at that. We got this. Swapping array positions. So how do we swap positions in our array? Boolean. For a bubble sort to work, we need to be able to swap two values if the first value is larger than the second. We can't do any temp variable magic like we would in JS. So, uh, well, that is what this is for. Okay. Array 1, S1. Calculate var greater than, let's see, is 2 greater one step one multiplied by what a great swap do you guys see this this is way too dang do you see what's happening here because this is a boolean a boolean this will either be a one or a zero and this one will be the opposite, which will be a zero or a one. They will be opposites of each other. So either this one's a zero, which is multiplied by the value, or the other one's a zero, which is multiplied by a value. So it does a swap. It's super smart. And so then they just do the inverted uh, inverse over here. 
And look, they assign the values right here into new variables. So those are like the temporary variables, right? Yet again, looks complicated. It's actually re uh, reasonably simple uh, in principle. It is. They're cooking in an arc furnace. They are. This is insane. Uh, in our previous functions, we created a Boolean to see if one was greater than two. So we have either a one or a zero. We can easily get the inverse. Is two greater than this one? One minus the var of this. Look at that knock gate. The man built the knock gate. That is straight up a variable knock gate right there. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. This is actually like genuinely genius. This is beautiful. The best part is that I feel like this is really understandable. The beauty of this is we can now do the following trick. Yeah, this is just swapping out the array, right? See, look, you can see that right here. See how I was saying that it multiplies by zero or by one, and then the other one will be inverted? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. A neat trick, huh? If one is greater or two is greater, we're swapped, then it would return the original values. All right, let's go. Yep, the original values remain the same. Perfect. That is effectively all we need to do bubble sort. The only reason we have so much CSS is because we cannot do loops in vanilla CSS yet. By the way, please, if you're listening CSS, don't add a loop. You add a loop, and you're literally going to make the language insane. People are going to write so much. There's going to literally be React CSS if you write a loop. If there's a loop, we're going to have a virtual CSS DOM. Don't do it. We don't need this. So we have to manually write out swaps for each stage of bubble uh, sort. Check one. Yep. Okay. Okay. That's all, folks. As I said, not a tutorial, but I need to introduce some interesting CSS switches and booleans uh, that may be useful in some strange scenario. Server-side CSS incoming? Please don't. CSS form actions uh, in a scenario future to you. I hope uh, you enjoy my silliness. Now, I have to just wait for someone to ask me if I can implement bubble sort so I can flex uh, on them in my CSS silliness. Dude, if you can, that'd be so good. Dude, I, I fully agree. That if someone brought this out in, a, in an interview, I would love it. I would absolutely love this. I'm going to be asking people, all right, you have, two, you have two options here. Number one, implement bubble sort. Or number two, implement this other question, which I'll explain. Implement bubble sort without Googling. Or that way, in case I inter ever interview this guy, I'm ready. I'm ready, and he's ready. And we could do it at the same time, and it'll be fantastic. This is so good. I didn't realize you could do this. I didn't realize min and max were variables. Or were functions available in CSS. But this makes perfect sense. He's just constricting a value and then using it to move things around. Now, here's the real question. Do you think it's faster than C? Because I've heard HTML is faster than C. So do you think CSS is faster than C? My guess is it probably is. Because honestly, either you use CSS or uh, uh, Squeal, and I typically choose Squeal over CSS. I mean, we all know Squeal is slower than C, but is CSS slower than C? I don't even know. Linux kernel runs in CSS. Absolutely. Okay. It's, it's honestly, it's better than C sharp or C plus plus CSS is my favorite C family language. Personally, it just is. Cause I think it's honestly the best. It's just the best. All right. The name is the CSS agenda.